Hello, Cherries fans. Welcome to Back of the Net and the Player Rating Show. And a much more positive one this time. Uh, back to winning ways. Uh, obviously, at St Andrews, our playground, as we all know. 3-1 win. Much better performance. Uh, changed system. Probably to do with the fact that Steve Cook was suspended. But also, like many fans have said, it was probably time to. Uh, and went to the fore at the back. And we looked a lot more, a lot more ourselves. Definitely more of an attacking threat anyway. And it was a convincing performance. Uh, one of our best this season. And... I almost felt like we were in control from start to finish. And if we needed to, we probably got, could have got a couple more. Probably unfortunate not to. And also unfortunate not to have a clean sheet with it as well. But back to winning ways, going into the international break. Uh, so all positive signs. And uh, yeah, it was nice to see that reaction, one that we said in the week, you know, that first defeat. How will the boys react? This uh, good test of their character and things like that. So it was really nice to bounce back. And uh, yeah, we'll go into the player ratings. I've got a guest with me tonight which I'm sure many of you will recognise from the Free For All and different podcast. Bit of a regular now is Morgan Scott. So welcome, Morgan. Nice to see you, mate. Do you enjoy the game? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to come on. So, yeah, no, looking forward to the show. And um, after the performance that we put in about uh, three hours ago now, it um, yeah, it feels good. Yeah, no, definitely, mate. I'll, um, we'll do one each. I'll kick off with... Uh, with Asmir and yeah, like I say, he didn't really have an awful lot to do. He's probably, I touched on it there, probably unfortunate not to have a clean sheet under his belt today. But um, with Cookie being out, Smithy on the bench, Gosling started on the bench, he managed to wear the armband today, which was, I never thought I'd see that. I mean, obviously losing Ramsdale was a big loss to us and um, he was really one of them keepers that really warmed to us fans. And uh, Begovic being shipped out on loan, seemingly a player that wasn't going to be involved for us has come back in and credit to him showed a lot of professionalism in my opinion to come in be consistent and to be honest with you I wouldn't swap him for another goalkeeper in the league I think he's been brilliant um really nice seeing with the armband today uh, for today's performance I'm going to give him an eight but I think the season as a whole Morgan what do you think I think Begovic has been brilliant yeah I think he um Chris Temple had a ratio um of was well his like shot ratio was like 85 or something phenomenal mm. at this uh, like yes okay we're only 11 games into the season but i think that's still really you know the championship you're playing every couple of games uh, every couple of days i think that's really fantastic and um he's like a new sign in like when rambo yeah. went i don't know about you i was thinking mark chavis has got a lot to fill and you know I, I, the way the bournemouth like to do things uh, but he's been like a completely new sign in and we haven't had to waste money you know yes okay his wages are probably still quite high but you know he's come back and since he's been out on loan his confidence confidence is phenomenal yeah I agree with you on that I think like you say it is like a new signing and fair play to Jason because you know he obviously was shipped out on loan under Eddie and seemingly wasn't in our plans and Jason's obviously said to him look if you want to have a go here I'll give you the opportunity and he's he's coming and taking it and credit to him for that um obviously like we said went into the four so I'll let you have a go on our right back today which was Jack Stacey what did you make of Jack's performance um in terms of a um, rating I'm going to give him a Eight out of ten. I thought he was quite um, that in terms of going forward. I thought he was always uh, um, the difference between him and Adam Smith. If Stacey is good going forward and coming back, I'm not knocking Smudge, but right at the moment, I think Stacey's been phenomenal. The best we had him at AFC Bournemouth. And I, I don't think I think Adam Smith's going to find it very tough to come back in and put after Stacey's performance today. So I said I think I gave him an eight out of ten, and I thought he was sensational today. Yeah, I agree with that. Can't can't argue with that. I think um, Jack's been very consistent. And like you said, uh, mentioning on um, Smithy there, because obviously he started kind of on that left-hand side. And I think that's credit to Jack because of how Jack's been doing. But today, obviously, he decided to leave Smithy out. And yeah, we get more balance with Diego on that left-hand side, don't we? And I think at the moment, I love Smudge. But if I had to pick out of Jack Stacey and Adam Smith on the right-hand side, I would go with Jack because he's very consistent. And like you say, probably a bit more of a full package. And he's he's got more of an engine as well, up and back. And probably a bit of a physical presence as well. So, yeah, I agree with that rating. Um, obviously, we had no Steve Cook today. I'll go into Meps. And to be fair, I thought he done well. We weren't troubled too much today. I think Meps is is having a, a good game and then a shaky game, then a good game. Do you know what I mean? I don't think he's he's had a few shaky moments, but also he's, he's done well. I'll, I'm going to give him a seven because I don't think he was quite as good as, as Jack, but he, he done his job well. Um, I was going to say to you, Morgan, what your opinion was in the sense that we probably both agree that we like that four. Well, I think Steve Cook will probably come back into the side when he's dealt with suspension because he's been brilliant for us. Is Meps the player that you think will probably miss out? 
we had this conversation. Well, I didn't go on the free for all, but the guys were discussing that on the free for all tonight, and mm. um, it was interesting. Um, I reckon, th- th- and they both, everyone who was on there, kind of said Mets will, um, not through any fault of his own, but will miss out due to the fact that. Um, that goal that we did concede should have, um, if Cookie was there, that might not have happened. He's a leader from every area on the pitch. He's our captain. Of course, he's going to come straight back in. Um, and Kelly is faultless. Um, I'm, I know we'll go on to talk about him in a minute. So, unfortunately, as much as I really like Maps, I think he's going to, you know, he's going away with Wales, with Brooksy now. But it's a shame, but he's going to have to work even harder and just take it like a true professional, I'm afraid. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Morgan. I think, um, like you say, I think Mets is a good player. And I, I think most championship teams he'd walk in, to be honest. But if we're going to go for a four and the two centre-backs, it'd be very hard to leave out Cook and Kelly. And getting on to Lloyd, what, what did you make of him? I thought he was he was a lot better today. Yeah, so in terms of before, um, rating, is it my turn? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go for a seven out of ten. Um, I thought he, again, was very, very good. Um, I thought he controlled himself very good at times. Um, it was a bit worrying when he went down off the ball into the advertising board. That was a bit of a concern because we don't want to miss him for more weeks. But no, I thought he put in a very decent performance. And apart from that goal, that shouldn't have been a, a free kick. It was very, very soft sure. in front of the line and the assistant referee. So, um, yeah, I thought he had a really, really good game today. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with a seven. I think that's fair. Like you say, I was also the same as you. I was thinking, oh no, when he went crashing into the advertising boards because we know of his injury concerns as well. But yeah, good to see Kelly up and running. I think every game he's playing, he's getting a bit stronger, which is good to see. Um, I'll do Diego. And and like I said, I'm, I'm always quite happy with Diego. I think he's almost, considering when he first came to us and people weren't convinced, he's almost becoming a player that I just think is consistent. Like, might not set the world alight, but I just feel like, he always gives you a solid performance, Diego, and he's got a decent left foot on him. He can play whether he plays in a three or he plays at left back or he plays wing back. He always does a job for you. I saw a thing, um, don't know if you've seen it, Morgan, on the stats in the championship. He's got one of the highest interceptions in the league. Um, so he's backing that up with numbers now. And yeah, I'm always happy with Diego. And and to be fair to him, like we mentioned there, I think having him on the left does give you a bit more balance. Um, so I'm going to give Diego probably the same as Kelly and Maps, I'd, I'd say a seven. But what did you think of Diego? Do you agree with me on that? Yeah, hundred percent, Tom. And I thought he um, today was uh, he, he he he's proved it time and time again. He can play out of position um, as a three at the left centre half, or he can play out on the left um, wing back or full back. And I I think he's been quite. Uh, he had quite a tough time when he first came to Bournemouth. Um, mm. You know, Charlie Daniels has obviously been at the club for a year. You know, Diego's had to fought fight really hard a bit like Jack Stacey on the other side of um defense so yeah no I thought he had really really good and also one positive from him he uh, managed again not to get booked today so he won't get a suspension yet so you know that's obviously a massive boost yeah that's true I forgot that he's um he's on the tightrope isn't he one more yellow but um yeah I think that's a good point you make as well with um with Charlie Daniels when he first come in he's had to shout out to Charlie Daniels by the way he scored his first goal for Shrewsbury today um I saw so that Twitter, yeah really yeah. good Tough for him. But yeah, I think that's another thing we were saying about Begovic. I think Rico's got to get credit for the fact that he was kind of waiting for his opportunity behind Daniels a lot. And to be fair to him, he's really taken it now. So I'm really chuffed for him. Um, I'll let you do the next one, Lewis Cook, which is obviously going to be a little bit difficult because he he come off today after a you know, half hour or so. But to be fair, in that half hour or so, when we were playing quite well, he was brilliant. So difficult one, but I'll give this to you, Morgan. What did you think on Lewis? Uh, because he didn't play the 490. Um, it's going to be hard to give him a 10 out of 10, but I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. I think that would be fair. He he only completed, what was it, about just under 30 minutes or so. So I thought um, Chris Temple's confirmed that he's had a bit of a kick to the shin, so hopefully he'll be fit after the international break in um, just over a week or so. But no, I thought he he was really, really good in the game early, but in the game, I thought, obviously, having Jeff slightly higher that we'll go on to talk about in a minute. Compared to Cookie, he 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 sat in between, just in front of the back and the defenders, and I thought he did really well in front of the centre half. He was always trying to get on the ball. He was always playing the correct pass, and he looked the best Lewis Cook that I've seen in a very very long time. So as yeah, I, I mentioned, I'm going to go for six. Yeah, and I that's think only like because he didn't start the, and that's only because he didn't finish the game. 
Yeah, I think like you say, Morgan, I think that's fair enough considering, you know, he only paid that certain amount. I think if if he had stayed on and kept performing like that, that six probably would have gone the other way and been a nine because um, he, he was good. But do you think, because obviously it's hard to talk about his performance today too much, but do you agree with me that I think the more he's playing and this new role, like you said, that he's a bit deeper, he's getting better and better and really starting to, what I thought we'd get from Lewis when he first came in, he's starting to like dictate games and really control football matches, drive on with the ball, make the passes. And I think if he keeps his level up, he's one of the best in, in the business in this division in the centre midfield, isn't he? Yeah, and I think there was a shot that he, um, it was our first shot on, t- well, uh, it went miles over the crossbar, but it was, I think it was our mm. first goal again, um, first shot on target against Derby. Or that the keeper didn't have to do anything. And, you know, that's what you want from a centre midfielder. You know, obviously we have our problems in attack, well, like most teams or in all areas of the pitch at some point throughout the season. But we need goals. And, um, it, you know, I like Lewis Cook. He, he's not shy to pull the trigger. And, you know, if he scores a goal from 40, 30 yards, oh, we're going to sit here and go, oh, oh, my God, say, yeah, no, it's really good. And um, I'm really happy for him because he's a young lad. He had a really, he had that ACL injury, didn't he? Not so yeah, bad, of a couple of se- a season or so ago. And that's a really, mentally, that's tough to come back from. Um, so, and physically, you know, being so young, that must be also very tough. So, no, it's really nice to see him back. And he, he looks a really match sharp Lewis Cook again. Yeah, it's great to see. I agree with everything he said there. It's, it's really good to see him looking sharp. And hopefully, like you said there, it looks like it's not a serious injury, just a bit of a kick. And we took him off more for precaution by the sounds of it, which is good. Um, I'll get on to my favourite now, Jefferson Lamb. I just love the guy. Um, so happy to have him back. And I thought he was, I thought he was brilliant. I just, like, like you said, he's, he's kind of played a little bit more advanced. And then he dropped back a little bit when, when Lewis come off. But you can ask him to do anything. Do you know what I mean? You can ask him to press high up the pitch. Uh, be a bit of a goal threat. He's proven that already. You could ask him to sit in front of the back four and be a bit nasty. You could ask him to get the ball and just dictate and play it out wide. And I just feel he does any job you ask of him. He just does it well. Um, and I just I, I just love him. And I just think you just know that it's even when the boys ain't playing that well, he's normally pretty good himself. Um, so, I mean, I'm tempted to go even higher, but I think, nah, you know what? I love Jeff. I'm going to give him a nine. What did you, um, what did you make of Jeff today anyway? I think um, Jeff did very, very well. He changed positions off um, when Dan Goffin came on. So he was the more attacking midfielder in the first 30 or so minutes. And then when Dan Goffin came on, he sat in front of the back four. And, you know, Chris Temple mentioned it in commentary. He was phenomenal as per normal. And it wasn't just doing his job. He had that fantastic shot that was a really good save by the um, Birmingham goalkeeper, Etheridge. Mm-hmm. But I thought he... The, the learner's just amazing, really. You know, he... he uh, and he goes away on international duty and you never know from some players what they're going to be like when they come back for tea. And he's, um, you know, playing for Colombia and all that. Uh, that They do a lot of travelling within a few days. It's a ter- tight turnaround. Um, uh, he's always late back from compared to most of the lads. And um, he, he never looks like he's knackered. Um, and it, it's just amazing. And he's a really, really... I met him a handful of times. He's really, really nice. And um, yeah, no, he's just going to be a massive part of our promotion campaign if we are to get back to where we want to be and that's in the Prem. Yeah, exactly, man. I'm just delighted that I was a little bit concerned that we might lose him at the start of the season because of his quality and the fact that we've got a player like Lerma in this league is is just brilliant. Um, I'll let you have kind of the main man today. David Brooks, great to see him. I, I thought in the week when he kind of first come back, I thought he was poor. Um, so I was uh, almost a little bit surprised to see him start today, but in that system... And getting a bit of room and time on the ball, brilliant that he got he got he got on the score sheet as well. But I mean, if we keep him at them levels, he's going to tear this league apart, isn't he? Yes, yeah, Tom. And um, to be honest with you, I'm going to say so my rating for David Brooks. I'm going to go with a. I'm going to go with an eight out of ten, and the reason I'm going to go for an eight out of ten is because yep. of his um, early on in the game, he gave the ball away a few times. So, and, you know, you shouldn't be giving the ball away. If you're going to have a really fantastic game, you shouldn't be giving the ball away at, at all. You know, I'm not saying that people aren't human and they don't make mistakes, but, as uh, you know, in the Championship Premier League, you don't give the ball away. Um, but then he seemed to get that out of the system. I think that's a bit of nerve from the lad because then he seemed to get Matt Sharp and he started to do things 
the the old David Brooks way, and I like that about mm. David Brooks because I'm uh, he's one of my favourite players at AFC Bournemouth, and I think today he was back, uh, not quite there, but he's a much better position way back to where we want him to be, and to get two goals. Although Solanke got quite lucky that it was didn't end up, David Brooks was in the right place at the right time, and um, uh, and he did try and want to get his hat trick like any player would. So yeah, it's definitely getting better from the guy, and um, hopefully uh, Whale um, they mentioned on the free for Whale will wrap him up in cotton wool the same as Met in case we need them because after the international break, um, especially Brooks is going to be um, key to keeping our squad fit and healthy. Yeah, no, definitely agree. And I think, um, like you said, we're just going to, with every game, we're going to see him get a little bit sharper. And like you say, he started the game, there was a few dodgy touches, few, and then he just grew into it, didn't he, like you say? So, um, yeah, great to see it. I think if you've got a fully fit, sharp Brooks, then you've got a hell of a player. Um, I'll get on to Junior Stanislas, who I think, again, is is a player that I really like. Um, obviously, always has his fitness fitness issues, which is a shame, which has been all through his career. Um and he's had a few good games a season, a few not so good games. But I thought he was good today. Um, managed to complete 90, which is big for Junior as well. And I thought same his as little. Yeah, exactly. Same as Brooksy. You know, really good for the pair of them. And I was I a bit was... surprised. Well, I, just to go on, I was just a little bit surprised that um, I was thinking 70 minutes in Brooksy might come off. Maybe same for Stanislav, maybe Brim Rayro on, um, maybe even Sam Savage at times. Not, uh, uh, not that we needed it in the end, but just to kind of. Um, protect some of the players that are prone to injury and just make sure that we, we're we not picking any Sibby knocks up when we're in control of the game. But um, yeah, I'll let you continue with Junior, but um, it was just a bit surprising we didn't make more than one change. Yeah, I was a bit surprised that I kind of thought um, when the game looked in control, I thought probably Junior and, and Brooksy, like you say, I thought, oh, they might get, you know, rested now and bring on, like you say, Raquel Mel or something like that. Potentially, I guess, just thinking about it, is Jason thinking it would be it'd be really important going forward that Brooksy and Stanis have got 90 minutes under their belt and whether he thought, you know, we were in control of the game, they didn't have to bust the gut and keeping them on for 90 would would do a lot for them potentially. I'm not sure, but I thought I thought Junior, you know, as much as Brooksy got on the score sheet and and so did Arnie. I thought um I thought Junior linked things up really well today. He was he was clever. Um, he picked in little pockets. He was he was in behind Dom at times. He was wide at other times, and he he gets overlooked sometimes. I think Junior is a real intelligent footballer. Um, and yeah, I was happy with Junior today. I'm I'm going to give him an eight because I was I was I was impressed with Junior. What did you think? I thought Junior Stanislav was, um, uh, obviously we had Arnie and uh, Brooksy in the wide position um, and then Solanke through the middle. But I thought Junior could um, make things happen. He's a very creative player as Junior Stanislav and people don't give him a lot of credit. But I think um, we've done really well to get him fit again. And um, again, he's going to be really important to us going forward if we want to get back to where we want to be. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him push on. And I agree with what you were saying. And he was spot on again. And um, yeah, he, he's just back to himself after some really tough injuries again. Yeah, definitely similar to what we were saying with Brooks here. If we can keep him fit, keep him sharp, we've got a really good player there. So you're going to have Arnie now, who's a, a player that's turned on a bit of magic off the bench and in some games, and I would say in kind of in spells in games, he's been unplayable. He's been unbelievable. And then he's gone missing in a few games. Um, it's just getting that consistency with Arnie, but he seems to be back to it today. What did you think of Arnie? Um, I call him our magic man. I thought he was. Um, I thought he was really, really good again today. I thought um, it's really hard to fault any of the Bournemouth lads today, obviously, from what performance they put in, considering the performance we put in a, three or four days ago, which was comparatively worse. But in terms of Arnie today, I'm going to give him a nine out of ten, and that's because he he made the thing. He made things happen. Um, obviously, he got his goal that. Yeah, you know, obviously started us winning the game, and then ob the difference between Arnie, he can run past someone so easily, and there's two choices: they can either hack him and take a book in, or he can score. It's as simple as that. And when he's on his game, he's perfectionist. When he's off his game, what we saw on um, at Sheffield a few days ago, the difference again, and and. Everyone's human, but it's really hard to sit here and say, you know, today was perfect because by any means it wasn't. You know, I think Steve Henson and Kurt Tobey were talking about how many times we were mucking around at the back a few times on the 44th minute, but that's for them to talk about later. But no, Arnie going forward today was really magical. So he deserves a nine. Yeah, I agree with that. I think he does deserve a nine. I think, like you're saying, he's the type of player who 
can just be unbelievable. And like you say, he beats a man. And a lot of wingers, I think, in this day and age, like Arnie, can beat their man, but haven't got the finishing ability he's got. He's got a hell of a finish on him. He just bends it into that corner really nicely. But like you say, then when he's having an off day, he just goes missing. He's almost pointless having out there. So I think now for Arnie, it's about getting that consistency. If he can do that and start doing them levels of performance week in, week out, then he's going to get a hell of a lot of goals. And, uh, you know, many fullbacks are going to really struggle to cope with Arnie, that's for sure. Um, and they was, yeah, um, just to add on to that, um, if I may, mm. they were saying that um, he was saying that he was the best um, player in Holland. Like, he's probably one of the best Dutch international. So, um, if, if he keeps on... Off, I know he's not in the Prem, so it'd be interesting because most people have to be playing in the Prem to get an um, international call-up. But it'd be really... Obviously, we've got a few Jefferson and Lama, et cetera, but that's a bit different. But if he gets to the top of the game and he's getting 10, 15 goals a season, 10, 11 assists, then he's going to be well up there to getting an international call-up if he can keep performing at this level. So, no, really proud for the lab. Really does that. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think if he if he gets the numbers, scores the goals and stays fit, then I think Holland are definitely going to look at him for at least friendlies and things like that. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, I'll do the front man, Dom Solanke. The only thing that wasn't in his performance today was a goal. Um, real shame for him because that's thing that I understand that fans are putting on him. He is a striker and he, he's not clinical enough. Felt for him on the last goal because he's hit the post and it's come back and Brooks, he's finished it off and he was so close. But I tell you what, in the week he didn't start the game and we looked poor. We brought him back in today and he just, he links everything up so well. Everyone around him looks so much better. And I could just imagine if I was an attacking player playing for Bournemouth, I'd want Solanke to be playing because he, he does so much graft. He connects things so well. He's such a clever footballer. And I just, if he could just add a few little goals to his game, you know, I'm I'm desperate for him to add a few goals because I, I love Dom. Um, I love what he's given to the team, but I totally appreciate when people say he needs to be scoring more goals because he is a striker. But um, for his performance overall, I'm going to put him up there and I'm going to give him a nine. But um, what did you th- what did you think of Dom today? Do, do you agree that I thought he um, had a really good performance? Yeah, I've been a bit critical of Dom, you know, um, you expect, um, people expect him to get a lot of goals, but today I'm going to give him credit. I thought his hold-up play was um, really, really, really good. Without some of his, uh, to be honest with you, I don't think if he was in the side, I don't think we would have done so well today. I think he was really, I think he made, I think he gave Brooksy, it might sound stupid, but I think he gave Brooksy and Dan Juma the quality that we know that they have by him being there. A bit like, um, I'm not going to compare him to Callum Wilson, but Callum Wilson, when and when he was holding the ball up, giving it to Ryan Fraser, etc., it kind of reminded me a bit like that today, where so, uh, Brooksy isn't particularly the tallest guy in the world, and North Dan Juma, although they're very, very good in, um, technically, they're not going to get the most headers in the world. So I think to have someone like Solanke flicking it on, anything like that, and to be honest with you, I think Solanke today did much more than Kin's done in anything we've seen of him this season. Like, shadow totally, of a totally doubt. Agree. Yeah, totally agree. Um, and I, I totally agree with your point there as well about Dom being up there. You get the best out of people like Dan Juma, like Brooks, um, because of what he offers. So, yeah, you're bang on there, Morgan. Um, I'll give you the, only the one sub today, like we briefly mentioned, but he played for a long part of it. So I'll let you have Goslin, who we always, I, I always am happy with Goslin in the sense that I know what I'm going to get from him. Um, probably missing out in terms of when we play normally to people like Lerma and Lewis, probably because of his quality on the ball. But having said that, he come on in the first half, so he deserves a rating and uh, thought he'd done okay. What did, what did you think of Goss today? Mm, it's going to be hard. Um, a, a bit like Lewis Cook, you know, only playing... Well, he played 70, so he played yeah. another 40 minutes. Um, I thought, Goss, um, to be honest with you, the job was kind of done when he came on. I thought... He, he he didn't really have too much difference on the game, but he was still he still came on. He didn't do anything too stupid. He could have scored. What a f- um, sensational tackle! How did that? He he could have got a little goal in the penalty area. He's always an engine of Dango, and then that's what I like because sometimes form of yes, today we had that creativity, but when we have people missing like Brooks, Danjuma, um, etc., it's always nice that I see a midfielder and they're not playing this backward pass to our back four. He's wanting to go forward and push on and try transition the play and add the tempo and that so for that and that reason alone I'm going to give him a six a bit like Lewis Cook I thought when he came on he did a job correctly and then um obviously the cover from his defenders and Jefferson Lerma as a bit of protection so he had that role and creativity to move into the midfield 
Yeah, I think that's fair. I think, like you say, the, the game, we were in control of the game when he came on, but he came on and just done his job well, you know, and uh, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. I think we're uh, going uh, to give, I think we'll both have a little bit of a chat about him and uh, come up with a joint rating, but I think we should uh, try and give Jace a rating. Um, from my point of view, I'm going to say that he's, yes, I understand that Steve Cook was suspended, which probably nudged him into it, but we've been getting away with it lately in terms of not not losing um, with that kind of system. Then we played in the week and we didn't get away with it. And once again, didn't look comfortable with that three at the back. First defeat, and he's gone, not having it, changed the system, said to Josh King, you're not going to play every week. You're out, you didn't perform. And I thought you made some real, with the system change, taking Josh King out, taking Smithy out, you know, some big decisions today. And he stood up and done it. And I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. What about you, Morgan? I thought he had a really, really, um, Jason Tindall's um, been at the club a long time, a player. Um, I'm really, uh, there was a lot of rumours that he was going to be the Matt Bournemouth manager and I'm really happy here. I think he's much different to Eddie. I, I think obviously there's been conversations because, you know, him and Eddie have worked together a long time. They're good friends off the pitch. But I think he's a really new manager. I think he's coming with his new idea. I like the way he speaks. Every game's a hard game. I like that. He's not cocky. He's not arrogant. Um, and I think he's really fresh. I think he's really good for this. I don't know what he's done to this team, but they don't seem to be playing all the backwards pass in all the time. I'm not saying that was a bad thing. I know Eddie liked to play out from the back. I think the difference between Bournemouth now to where we saw them last season is so much better. I think, all you know, you've got the people now who want to be at that club fighting to get back to where they want to be. And you've got the people who are much better and fair play. They want to go and progress to their careers and that's up to them. But Jason Tindall came back in and the 4 4 2 I wouldn't mind sticking with that. Maybe not every single game because teams will work it out and then you might not get to put in that performance every week. But the 4-3, um, the is it a 3-4? Yeah, he's kind of been doing the 3-4-3 three, three, yeah. or the 3-5-2, or the the hasn't he, really? Yeah, and it doesn't suit Bournemouth. Um, I think to play that formation, I'm not being disrespectful, I think you need three standing centre-halves, and although Steve Cook's one of them, I, Lloyd Kelly's got a way to go to be an outstanding, and so Chris Meppham. And that's not disrespecting them or being rude yeah. to anyone. But And then also, in terms of win-backs, although Rico and Stacey are good going forward, sometimes it's Nakarin going up and down and then up and down. And, you know, you look at Man uh, it, sometimes Man City don't even get a spot on. So for Bournemouth to play that way. So I think Jason Tindall, um, credit to him. He's changed it. He hasn't much around with Josh Kinn, as you mentioned. And um, the only thing that would have been nice to see is a bit more of Ray Ray McHale, maybe, because we haven't seen much of him. He came on against uh, Queen's Park Rangers and gave us a point with that little uh, half volley into the bottom corner. So it'd be really nice to see him a bit under the international break. But um, in terms of our squad... It's the best squad we had in such a long time, and we just need to keep everyone fit. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think, um, I think what I will say about about Jason, my only, I mean, I was quite happy with with the appointment in general. Um, once I got over being gutted with Eddie leaving, but um, my my worry was that because he'd worked under Eddie for so long and had the same group of players, was that he was going to be kind of a cardboard copy and was kind of going to just go, let's just carry on doing what Eddie's been doing um, and let's just do this but he's coming with new fresh ideas whether he continues with the three at the back or changes with the four um, regardless of that he's coming and trying to make a statement he's given people like Begovic a chance when Eddie clearly wasn't going to have him so I, I like the way that Jason's come in and stamped his own authority on it and said I'm going to do things I've got my own ideas um, so yeah I'm, I'm I'm buzzing with Jason just just for a rating I'm going to give him a give him a nine but I, I really hope that um, we kick on from here Going into the international break now, which is a bit frustrating, but at least we're going into it with a win. Um, and I'll tell you what, two points off the top and our next game is Reading. So um, that's going to be a cracker, mate. You looking forward to that one? Uh, absolutely. I hate the international break. I think it's oh. a really stupid idea with the amount of football. I think everyone's <laughs> human at the end of the day. And I think the sending players away on international duty, I know it's an honour to represent your country. And if I was given that opportunity, of course, I wouldn't turn it down. But I think with the climate of how many games you expect and football to play regardless if it's a normal season or not I don't, I just don't see the point of making and it's not just two games they're, they're sev uh, three games in seven days mad ain't it so um, it's hopefully we yeah well we can forget about it and hopefully we'll push on against Redden and um, get back to the yeah. top of the table ASAP 
Yeah, exactly, mate. I think I saw something about um, Jefferson Lerma is going to be going from Ecuador to Bournemouth to Rotherham in the space of a week. <laughs> it's absolutely mad. Um, but like you mentioned, if anyone could do it, Jeff can. So um, I'm sure we'll be fine. But yeah, great to have you on, Morgan. And uh, I'm Thank sure, you. E- sure everyone knows by now, but um, Morgan on Twitter and, and all social media and things like that. So big Bournemouth fan. And uh, sure you'll all see him again soon on the free falls and different podcasts going forward. Cheers, Morgan. Appreciate that, mate. And uh, yeah, like we said there, going into the international break, so um, a bit of a bit of a damper. But I'm sure, in terms of back of the net as a whole, and myself, will be trying to. There's a few few ideas and keep some content going. It was really important during the the first lockdown that we kept kept videos, kept different content going, kept the football chat and stuff going amongst the fans. And I'm sure we'll do that regardless of the international break. But yeah, happy to be going into it back to winning ways anyway. Um, you know, the, the country itself might not be in the best best state. We're, you know, things are still the same. We're getting run by a bit of a clown. Then you go over to America and they've got, God knows what's going on. At least they haven't got Trump now, but still a bit of a farce with elections. And another thing that remains the same is that St. Andrews is AFC Bournemouth's playground. Up the cherries. <laughs>